Well, hello, welcome back. It's Mark from Embedded Pro, and this is the 16th video in my series investigating the ARM Cortex M33 core. And I'm using the LPC 55S69 microcontroller from NXP to investigate the ARM Cortex M33. This week, dual core hands on. Here I am in MCU Expresso IDE. You'll note that it's 11.0.1 and the SDK that I'm using is 2.6.3. Now I did receive an email from NXP this week advising me of some updates. Uh, MCU Expresso IDE is now version 11.1 .1, and there's 2.7 of the SDK released and I'm going to investigate them in the coming weeks. But today is about dual core and I have two of the SDK projects imported. I've got Hello World CM33 Core 0 and CM33 Core 1 projects and I've imported these into MCU Expresso IDE. Now you remember from last week that these projects are linked together and in fact if I go to open the Core 0 project MCU Expresso IDE will ask me if I want to open the reference project. And that's the Core 1 project. So yes, I do. And you'll notice that MCU Expresso IDE has now opened the Core 1 project. We learned last week that the Core 0 is responsible for loading the Core 1 project and also for releasing it from reset. We can see that here in the source code. This is just like any other SDK project. Here we have the board initialization, a printf, and then here we start the multi-core manager, which is going to initialize core one and pass it some startup data. We'll see that shortly. Well, let's look at the memory for the projects and see if we can understand more about their architecture. Let me go to the project properties for Core 0. Select the project and off the screen here I'm going to run properties for the project. I'm here in the MCU settings panel for the project and we can see listed here is the memory for the Core 0 project. Flash here is at the top so that tells me that the code is going to be placed into Flash and there are three memory regions. Alias region RAM is at address 20 million and this is general purpose RAM for the project. At 20 million 33,000 is an alias region RAM 2 and this is the memory where Core 0 will place the code for Core 1. And lastly RAM 3 alias is an area for message sharing between the two projects and this is at address 20 million 31,800. We'll see that in the code shortly. Let's now look at the settings for the project. Here we are in the includes for the project. We can see that there's a path for the multi-core manager and that's the driver that the project is using to communicate between the two cores. The two projects, Core 0 and Core 1, are linked together and we can see that down here in the multi-core setting in the linker. This is the core zero project and it's the master and therefore it will have a slave. The slave here is M33 slave and that's been placed into region RAM2. We just saw that. That's at 20,033,000. And in that RAM area is placed an object and this is the slave application that comes from the core one project. It goes a little bit off the screen, but this shows me that there's a .axf.object file that comes from the Core 1 project. And this is how we import the Core 1 code into the Core 0 project. Let me just show you that object. Let me select it. I know that it's in the Core 1 project, and it's an object, so it's in the debug folder, and down here is the file that I want to include. It's suffix.axf.o. It's an object file. It's a linker setting and so when Core 1 is built 
is going to link in the Core 1 project. Let me apply and close and we'll turn our attention now to the Core 1 project. Let me select that and we'll open the project properties again just off screen. The dialogs opened at the C, C++ build settings view in the MCU linker multi-core. This time with the Core 1 project, we just have it defined as M33 slave. And this setting tells MCU Expresso IDE's linker to build an AXF.O object file that can be imported by the Core 0 project. In the includes view, we can see the include path for the multi-core manager, because of course Core 1 is using the multi-core driver to communicate with Core 0. And then lastly, in the MCU settings, again using the manage linker file system, and there are two RAM areas. Alias RAM is at address 30,033,000, and this is where the code is being placed. Anything defined as .text will be placed in this location. And that, of course, is the area of RAM named RAM2 for the Core Zero project. For communication between the two projects, there's another area of RAM, RAM2, address 30,000,800. And again, that's the same area that we saw for Core Zero. OK, let's now look at the code in some more detail. I've selected the Hello World CM33 Core Zero project, and I have the Hello World Core Zero.c that's the main source module open. First thing that we can note as we take a walk through is we have this hash define core one boot address, uh, which is 20,033,000. And we know that is the base address where the core one project will be located. As the project starts up, it has a very early call through this system init hook function. This is called very early in the project startup and it calls the function multi-core manager early init. And this just sets up and returns the core number of the current core. Of course, that's core zero in this project. That's sufficient to pre-initialize a multi-core manager. And then when main begins, the first function call is to multi-core manager init. And that registers the startup data, sets up the event handlers, and gets a multi-core manager ready for use in our project. After that, it's a very simple MCU Expresso SDK project with board initialization and the UART configured. This time we'll print hello world from the primary core. And then the only thing left for core zero project is to start up the second core. It does this through the multi-core manager start core API. We pass in the parameter for the number of the core we want to start, core one. The boot address, that's the base address of the code that we're about to start. Of course, that's 20,033,000. We can pass in some startup data. And in this case, we're passing in the value 2 million. And the final parameter defines the mode in which the multi-core manager will start the second project. We're using start synchronous, so in this case, the multi-core manager will start the core one and wait for confirmation that the core has started before continuing. Once we have that signal, that event, we'll print F secondary core has started, and then we'll sit it spinning in this loop. Let me turn now to the core one project. I select the project and open the source. This is called hello world core one.c. This is a much more simple project with no board initialization. Again, we have the MCU manager early init called through the system init hook. And again, this just sets up the multi-core manager for use. This project will blink an LED, so we configure the LED here. Multi-core manager init, that's just going to install the event handlers for the communication between the primary and the secondary core. And then we wait until we read the startup data that's passed from core one. Again, this is using the synchronous mode. Let me just go and look at that in this project. 
and the multi-core manager has a context structure with a state flag. When core one starts up, it checks to see that it's in the reset state, which of course it will be, then advances the state into startup getting low core state, its value one, and triggers that change to the primary core through the multi-core manager trigger event call. And finally, it reads the startup data and returns with a status code. So when core one has read the startup data, it's triggering an event to the primary core. And the primary core has been waiting synchronously for that event to occur. When that happens, it's released to move on to print this message and come into the while loop. Back in main for core one, we've read the startup data and the parameter to million that's passed from the primary core is used to control this delay loop as the core starts up. It's just so that there's a delay before the LED is blinked. The LED is initialized and then we print a message from the secondary core and then sit in this loop, toggling the LED with this configurable startup delay that was passed in from the primary core. Well, let's compile and download the code and look at it in the debugger and we'll see the behavior in some more detail. I'm now gonna show you the behavior of multi-core projects in the debugger. So I'm gonna select my core zero project and run the debugger. And as always, MCU Expresso IDE makes a probe discovery and finds the LPC link two that's on the LPC 55S69 EVK. Let's say OK. The IDE just rebuilt the project. And this time the MCU Expresso debugger finds two cores available on the serial wire debug link to the microcontroller core zero and core one. The project's been built for core zero and so we must connect to core zero through the debugger. Okay. Flash memory's just been programmed and the debugger runs up to main in the core zero project. Well, I'm in the core zero project and now let me run on until we've just printed this hello world. I'll set a breakpoint here, line 108 is when we start the secondary core. And let me run the code. We've hit this breakpoint and we've made the two printfs. We haven't yet started the secondary core. Let me just load that project. This one here, debug. So we're just loading the second project. Okay, now we see this behavior in MCU Expresso IDE. And in this debug window, we have two separate projects. Here we can see the Hello World Core Zero. That's suspended at the breakpoint that we've just hit. And the Core One project is also loaded in the debugger. And um, that says it's currently running. In fact, it's not quite running because it hasn't started yet. I have two projects open in the debugger. I've got the core zero project. And that's currently at a breakpoint. We can see it's just about to print F hello world from the primary core. The core one project has been loaded into the debugger but isn't currently active on the LPC 55S69 because core zero hasn't initialized and started that core. Remember that Core Zero is responsible for loading the Core One project into RAM, and the Core One project is running from base address 20,033,000. Let's select the Core Zero project and open a memory monitor on 20,033,000. Part of the low level initialization of the chip, Core Zero has copied down from Flash into this memory location the code that Core 1 is about to run. We can see the initial stack pointer, the reset vector, some interrupts, and the code is beginning up here. Now I'm going to step over this printf from Core 0 
and we'll see the output down here in the console window. I'm using semi-hosting in this project. Let me step over. Hello world from the primary core. We're now about to start the secondary core. Let me step over that. Starting the secondary core. And now core zero is going to start core one. It's going to start it from the core one boot address, which is 20,033,000. It's going to pass in a parameter, 2 million. That's startup data. And we'll start the secondary core in the synchronous mode. Core 0 is going to wait until it's received an event from Core 1 to say that Core 1 has started before printing F. this secondary core application has been started. Let me run that. Now we hit the first breakpoint in the secondary code. This is the first line of main, and as always, MCU Expresso Debugger will stop in the first line of main. I'm going to initialize the LED. Let me step over that. Initialize the memory manager. And now we're going to go and read the startup data. Again, this is synchronous mode, so it's going to read the data and signal to the primary core that it's received that data. I'm just going to run on but I'll put a breakpoint at this line here. Let me run. Okay, two things have happened here. Core 0 has started Core 1 in synchronous mode. Core 1 has started and has triggered an event back to Core 0 to say that it's been started. And so we've run on to this next line here. In Core 1, Core 1 has hit a breakpoint. That's here. It's received the startup data. You can see if I hover over startup data, we see the value 2 million. And we're just about to print F hello from CPU 1. Let me do that. Hello from CPU 1. And now we can just run the code on and the LED will toggle. The red LED on my LPC 55S69 EVK is flashing at about 1 hertz. I'm going to go back into the primary core, core 0. That, of course, had hit this breakpoint. Now I'm going to run over that. Secondary core application has been started, and we're going to spin in this while loop. So that's all this very simple example from the SDK for multi-core manager is going to demonstrate. Core 0 started up, initialized the multi-core manager, and started up Core 1 with some startup data, the value 2 million. It waited until it knew that the Core 1 had received that data before continuing, and has hit this while loop. Core 1 was started by Core 0, received the startup data, and is using the value that it was passed to toggle the LED at a controllable rate. And that's all for Multicore Manager today. Are you finding these videos useful? Well, if so, then please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share it with your friends. I'll see you next time for video 17. Goodbye.